Installing home charging is one of the hidden costs of EV ownership. When you switch from a gas car to an electric car, generally you have to think about what your charging setup is gonna look like. In my case, I'm at my garage right now, and for me, it was installing a NEMA 1450 outlet here. And to do this, my installation costs were $5,000. This can range anywhere from next to nothing to, in my case, thousands of dollars. So today I'm gonna be walking through my home charging setup, all the materials that were needed for it, and what the costs associated with that were. So I've moved around a fair amount since buying my EV. I started out in an apartment without any home charging. I was just charging at my office and letting my car sit in the parking lot overnight. Then moved to another apartment complex where I rented a garage and was able to charge on a 120 volt outlet. And now we are at my first house. I just bought a house and we're standing in my detached garage here. And this is part of the reason my install costs so much. I wanted to set up the garage not only for one charger, but eventually two chargers, and also have the ability to test out multiple chargers, have open circuits where I could plug things in and try things out. So that's really why my install costs so much. I probably overdid it in the amount of power and electrical upgrades I actually needed to get charging in my garage here. As I mentioned, this is a detached garage, so you're seeing outside basically through this door and one of the main major upgrades I made was a new panel here. So we had this installed. It is a 100 amp sub panel being fed from the main house. And this gives me tons of room to install new electrical circuits and try out new things if I wanna install anything new. So as you can see, we've got some circuits just at the bottom for lighting here. And then we've got a 50 amp circuit at the top here. Obviously plenty of room if I wanna add more stuff. So this 50 amp circuit is feeding kind of above my head here over to the NEMA 1450 outlet. I do agree this is definitely the cheapest way to get charging your a garage, I guess, charging ready. You can install this and the mobile adapter that comes with most cars will have a plug that's able to plug into here and then charge your vehicle. So you're kind of foregoing the cost of buying a separate charging unit like I have on the wall here. Those can run anywhere from a few hundred to a thousand bucks and can really add to your charging install cost. In my case, I actually work for an electric vehicle charging company. So that's the charger I'm testing out on the wall over here. So you might see some more videos on that in the future. But we've got this outlet installed now. It's a 240 volt outlet. And this gives me a lot of flexibility of what I wanna plug into it. As you can see, it's just plugged into the charger on the wall right now. But even most wall mounted chargers sometimes have this plug so that you can plug it in directly to this and you're not having to do any extra wiring or anything like that. But it's getting a little bit chilly out here so I'm gonna head back inside, hopefully get some better audio as well. So first off, let's walk through kind of the scope of work of what electrical upgrades happen to get home charging in my garage. Really the main thing I wanted here was a new electrical panel in the garage. It is detached. And you can see it's about you know 30 or 40 feet away from the main house. And I actually needed roughly an 80 foot run to get from my main 200 amp electrical panel out to the garage and also install a new 100 amp panel in the garage. So that 100 amp feed that's coming off of the main panel had to run through my entire basement, which is luckily an older basement. It's all exposed in the bottom. So you can kind of see where those runs were and where they needed to go. I've, it then goes underneath my deck, so you can see kind of the, the drilling that we needed to do to get it through the deck there. And then we also installed a conduit that ran across my yard. So you can see kind of on the drone video here where that trench is running, and that's a pretty good run there. That's probably about 20 feet from the deck to the actual garage. Trenching across the yard there was not that tough, but then as you can see, there's a bunch of concrete right in front of the garage area there. And that was definitely the hardest part of the uh, contractor's work there. They had to drill into that concrete there and do a lot of work to break that up so we could get the electrical underground there and then pop up and go into the garage. And then inside the garage, as I've mentioned a couple times, there is a new 100 amp panel out there. So next let's look at the costs of all those parts and materials necessary to make that happen and why this was actually so expensive here. So. First off, we had the 100 amp breaker in the main panel, that was about $80. And easily the most expensive part here was the number two aluminum wire we needed to run from the 200 amp main panel out to the 100 amp 
sub panel. That run is pretty far, as I mentioned, and total cost on that was around $750. We then also had to buy a sub panel for out in the garage. That was about $120 for the new 100 amp panel. The 50 amp breaker we needed for out in the garage was around 20 bucks. The 50 amp wire we needed for attaching the NEMA 1450 outlet to the new sub panel was around $370. That's because they were only selling it in 50 foot increments, so I had to pay a little bit more for that. The NEMA 1450 outlet I had already, which was nice, so that didn't really cost me anything, but I think at the time I bought it, it was around 20 bucks. And then we had just all of the PVC conduit and additional parts necessary for the conduit and all of that added up to a little over $200. Contractor did have to rent a trencher, which cost about $90 for the day. And all in all, this was about a three day job between all of the work necessary, and it was just one guy doing it. So he was able to get it done for a little over $3,000 in labor. That was really one of the big costs here just because of the amount of time it took and kind of the weird nuances of my specific house that took longer. And between all the materials and labor, that total cost was around $5,000. So why did all of this cost so much? So first off, when you're doing any kind of electrical work, the main driver here is that distance between equipment, obviously excluding kind of major pieces like an EV charger or something like that distance between things is gonna be a big cost driver. So in my case, we had an 80 to 90 foot run. It's roughly $8 a foot just in wire alone to get that feed across my yard and into my garage. And as you can see, just by the cost of wire, that was $750 just for the wire necessary to go across the yard. That doesn't include labor or additional parts and pieces necessary to make that happen. And outside of just the materials, it costs more to buy the labor that is necessary to install wiring in this case and conduit across a yard that is that far. Luckily, it was mostly grass here, but anytime you're trenching across, across concrete, as you can see, that takes a lot longer. And again, one of the major reasons this did cost more is I put in that 100 amp feed instead of what was necessary, which is probably something like a 50 amp feed just to run the charger. In my case though, my garage probably needed a new panel anyway, so upgrading that while I was already doing the work is probably the best option here for me. So my three recommendations here, first off, when you are buying a house, especially if you're somebody that has an EV or looking to buy an EV in the future, definitely look at the electrical situation in the house when you're purchasing the home. It is obviously very important for the inspector to look at and make sure everything's okay, but make sure you take an extra look at what your EV charging situation is going to be like. In my case, I had a detached garage. I kind of knew going in this wasn't going to be a great situation, especially if we needed to upgrade things. And as you can see, that was a big upfront cost right after purchasing the house. And specifically, I would look at what the electrical service is like at where you're actually gonna be plugging in your car, where you plan to park your car overnight. Second recommendation here is just know about detached garages. In general, they run off of the main panel that is in the house. They generally don't have a separate service that is in the garage or specifically for the garage. So just know that going in, you're not only gonna be limited by the garage, but you're also gonna be limited by the main panel. So just kind of know, what you're getting into with a detached garage. And third here, this is definitely kind of overkill what I did in my situation. A cheaper option here would have just been to directly bury wire running out to the garage and just install a separate circuit for my electric vehicle charger. But, you know, as I've mentioned a few times, I wanted to be kind of upgrade ready and have additional capacity. So this is the route I went with, definitely the more expensive option. So final thoughts here. If you are building a home newly built, I think it is very smart to install this higher amp service to the garage up front. Whether or not you have an EV now, generally most people I talk to are at least thinking about getting an electric vehicle in the future. So if you're building a new house, and building a garage or building a place to park your car, I would definitely recommend running that electrical ahead of time. Trying to do anything after the fact is always gonna be more expensive. So doing the work now and getting that service in place is definitely preferred. Also just be aware that older houses have kind of weird electrical. I actually moved into a hundred year old house. So there's a lot of kind of wonky things going on here and things to be aware of with older houses. Generally that upgrade is gonna be more expensive in older houses just because of the way they're built and kind of the weird things that go on here. And also just be aware that installing charging can be expensive. I know generally, as I mentioned at the top of the video, charging is kind of a hidden cost of electric vehicle ownership. Getting that charging set up for whatever your setup is 
can add a lot of costs, but you know, it can be anywhere from zero dollars in my case to thousands of dollars. So it really depends on what your setup is like and what your specific home looks like. But just be aware of all these things going in and don't think that, hey, I can just pull into my garage and charge my car. Definitely be thinking about these things as you're going through EV ownership. That is all for this video. Definitely let me know what you think down in the comments. Did I do this right? Did I do this wrong? What are your recommendations if you're somebody that owns an EV or has had to do a similar upgrade? I'd love to hear about your specific situation. And also good to be back on YouTube here. I know I've been very busy the past couple months between moving and everything else. So if you wanna know even more about my home charging setup, definitely let me know. Be happy to do more videos on this topic, but that'll do it for this one. And I will see you in the next video.